the reading of the most set apart scripture genesis through revelation ibrim also known as hebrews chapter 1 Allahim, having of old spoken in many portions and many ways to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by the Son, whom he has appointed heir of all, through whom also he made the ages, who being the brightness of the esteem and the exact representation of his substance, and sustaining all by the word of his power, having made a cleansing of our sins through himself, sat down at the right hand of the greatness on high, having become so much better than the messengers, as he has inherited a more excellent name than them. For to which of the messengers did he ever say, You are my son, today I have brought you forth. And again, I shall be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the messengers of Allahim do reverence to him. And of the messengers, indeed, he says, who is making his messengers spirits and his servants a flame of fire. But to the son, he says, your throne, O Allahim, is forever and ever. A scepter of straightness is the scepter of your reign. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Because of this, Allahim, your Allahim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Master, did found the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you remain, and they shall all grow old like a garment. And like a mantle, you shall fold them up, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years shall not fail. And to which of the messengers did he ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all serving spirits sent out? to attend those who are about to inherit deliverance? Chapter 2 Because of this, we have to pay more attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the words spoken through messengers prove to be firm, and every transgression and disobedience received a right reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a deliverance, which first began to be spoken by the Master and was confirmed to us by those that heard? Allahim also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the set-apart spirit, distributed according to his own desire? For it is not to messengers that he has subjected the world to come concerning which we speak, but somewhere one has witnessed, saying, What is man that you remember him, or the son of man that you look after him? You have made him a little lower than Allahim. You have crowned him with esteem and respect and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, 
he left none that is not subjected to him. But now we do not yet see all subjected to him. But we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the messengers, Yahusha, because of the suffering of death, crowned with esteem and respect, that by the favor of Elohim he should taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, because of whom all are and through whom all are, in bringing many sons to esteem, to make the prince of their deliverance perfect through sufferings. For both he who sets apart and those who are being set apart are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I shall announce your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I shall sing praise to you. And again, I shall put my trust in him. And again, see, I and the children whom Allahim gave me. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself similar, similarly shared in the same, so that by means of his death he might destroy him having the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver those who throughout life were held in slavery by fear of death. For doubtless, he does not take hold of messengers, but he does take hold of the seed of Abraham. So in every way, he had to be made like his brothers in order to become a compassionate and trustworthy high priest in matters related to Elohim, to make atonement for the sins of the people. For in what he had suffered, himself being tried, he is able to help those who are tried. Chapter 3 Therefore, set apart brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, closely consider the emissary and high priest of our confession. Messiah Yahusha, who was trustworthy to him who appointed him, as also Moshe in all his house. For this one has been deemed worthy of more esteem than Moshe, as much as he who built the house enjoys more respect than the house. For every house is built by someone, he who built all is Elohim. And Moshe indeed was trustworthy in all his house as a servant or a witness of what would be spoken later. But Messiah, as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the boldness and the boasting of the expectation firm to the end. Therefore, as the set-apart spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, in the day of trial, in the wilderness, where your fathers tried me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Look out, brothers, lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of unbelief and falling away from the living Elohim. But encourage one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceivableness of sin. For we have become partakers of Messiah if we hold fast the beginning of our trust firm to the end. 
while it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Was it not all who came out of Mitzrayim, led by Moshe? And with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they were unable to enter in because of unbelief. Chapter 4 Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us first, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the good news was brought to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not having been mixed with belief in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter into that rest. As he has said, as I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. And yet his works have come into being from the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has said thus about the seventh day, and Allahim rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in this again, if they shall enter into my rest, since then it remains for some to enter into it, and those who formerly received the good news did not enter in because of disobedience, he again defines a certain day, today, saying through Daoud, so much later as it has been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Yahushua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Allahim. For the one, having entered into his rest, has himself also rested from his works, as Allahim rested from his own. Let us therefore do our utmost to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. For the word of Allahim is living and working and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all are naked and laid bare before the eyes of him with whom is our account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Yahushua, Yahusha, the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who was tried in all respects, as we are, apart from sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of favor in order to receive compassion and find favor for timely help. Chapter 5 For every priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in matters relating to Allahim to offer both gifts and offerings for sins, being able to have a measure of feeling for those not knowing and being led astray, since he himself is also surrounded by weakness. And on account of this, he has to offer for sins, 
as for the people, so also for himself. And no one obtains this esteem for himself, but he who is called by Allahim, even as Aaron also was. So also the Messiah did not extol himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have brought you forth. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and petitions with strong crying and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and was heard because of his reverent fear, though being a son, he learned obedience by what he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the causer of everlasting deliverance to all those obeying him, having been designated by Allahim a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, concerning whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For indeed, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first elements of the words of Allahim. And you have become such as need milk and not solid food, for everyone partaking of milk is inexperienced in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food is for the mature whose senses have been trained by practice to discern both good and evil. Chapter 6 Therefore, having left the word of the beginning of the Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of belief toward Allahim, of the teaching of immersions and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of everlasting judgment. And this we shall do, if Allahim indeed permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted the heavenly gift, and have become partakers of the set-apart spirit, and have tasted the good word of Allahim, and the powers of the age to come, and fall away, to renew them again to repentance, having impaled for themselves the son of Allahim again, and put him to open shame. For ground that is drinking the rain, often falling on it, and is bearing plants fit for those by whom it is tilled, receives blessing from Allahim. But if it brings forth thorns and thistles, it is rejected and near to being cursed and ends up by being burned. But although we speak in this way, beloved, we are persuaded concerning you of better matters which possess deliverance. For Allahim is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name, in that you have attended to the set-apart ones and still attend. And we desire that each one of you show the same eagerness to the entire confirmation of expectation until the end, in order that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through belief and patience inherit the promises. For Allahim, having promised Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, swore by himself, saying, Truly, blessing I shall bless you, and increasing I shall increase you. And so, after being patient, 
he obtained the promise. For men do indeed swear by the one greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. In this way, Allahim, resolving to show even more clearly to the heirs of promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, confirmed it by an oath, so that by two unchangeable matters in which it is impossible for Allahim to lie, we might have strong encouragement, we who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the expectation set before us, which we have as an anchor of the life, both safe and firm, and entering into that within the veil, where Yahusha has entered as a forerunner for us, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Chapter 7 For this Melchizedek, sovereign of Sh Shalem, priest of the Most High Allahim, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, his name being translated, indeed, first, sovereign of righteousness, and then also sovereign of Shalem, that is, sovereign of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but having been made like the son of Allahim, remains a priest for all time. Now see how great this one was, to whom even the ancestor Abraham gave a tenth of the choicest booty. And truly, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a command to receive tithes from the people, according to the Torah, that is, from their brothers, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. However, the one whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed the one who held the promises. And it is beyond all dispute that the lesser is blessed by the better. And here it is men who die that receive tithes, but there it is someone of whom it is witnessed that he lives. And one might say that through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, gave tithes, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Truly, then, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. For he of whom this is said belongs to another tribe, from which no one had attended at the slaughter place. For it is perfectly clear that our master arose from Yehuda, a tribe about which Moshe never spoke of concerning priesthood. And this is clearer still, if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become, not according to the Torah of fleshly command, but according to the power of an endless life. For he does witness, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For there is indeed a setting aside of the former command because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the Torah perfected not, 
but the bringing in of a better expectation through which we draw near to Allahim. And it was not without an oath, for they indeed became priests without an oath, but he became priest with an oath by him who said to him, Yahuwah has sworn and shall not regret, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. By as much as this Yahusha has become a guarantor of a better covenant. And indeed, those that became priests were many, because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he remains forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save completely those who draw near to Allahim through him, ever living to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, kind, innocent, undefiled, having been separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, who does not in who does not need as those high priests to offer up slaughter offerings day by day first for his own sins and then for those of the people for this he did once for all when he offered up himself for the torah appoints as high priest men who have weakness but the word of the oath which came after the torah appoints the Son, having been perfected forever. Chapter 8 Now the summary of what we have are saying is, we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the greatness in the heavens, and who serves in the set-apart place and of the true tent which Yahuwah set up and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and slaughters. So it was also necessary for this one to have somewhat to offer. For if indeed he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the Torah, who serve a, a copy and shadow of the heavenly. As Moshe was warned when he was about to make the tent, where he said, See that you make all according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent service, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I shall conclude with the house of Yisrael and with the house of Yahuda, a renewed covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yahuwah, because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Yisrael. After those days, says Yahuwah, giving my laws in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall by no means teach each one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, because they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, 
because I shall forgive their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessness, I shall no longer remember. By saying renewed, he has made the first old. Now what becomes old and growing aged is near disappearing. Chapter 9 now the first covenant indeed had regulations of worship and the earthly set-apart place, for a tent was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand and the table and the showbread, which is called the set-apart place. And after the second veil, the part of the tent which is called most set-apart, to which belonged the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that held the manna, and the rod of Aaron that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it, the cherubim of esteem were overshadowing the place of atonement, about which we do not now speak in detail. And these Having been prepared like this, the priests always went into the first part of the tent, accomplishing the services. But into the second part, high priests went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for sins of ignorance of the people. The set apart spirit signifying this, that the way into the most set-apart place was not yet made manifest while the first tent has a standing, which was a parable for the present time in which both gifts and slaughters are offered which are unable to perfect the one serving as to his conscience, only as to foods and drinks and different washings and fleshly regulations imposed until a time of setting matters straight. But Messiah, having become a high priest of the coming good matters, through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, entered into the set-apart places once for all, not with the blood of goats, and calves, but with his own blood, having obtained everlasting redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the defiled, sets apart for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the Messiah, who through the everlasting Spirit offered himself unblemished to Elohim, Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. And because of this, he is the mediator of a renewed covenant, so that death, having taken place for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance. For where a covenant is, it is necessary for the death of the covenanted one to be established. For a covenant over those dead is firm, since it is never valid while the covenanted one is living. Therefore, not even the first covenant was instituted without blood. For when, according to Torah, Every command had been spoken by Moshe to all the people. He took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which Elohim commanded you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with blood both the tent and all the vessels of the service. 
And according to the Torah, almost all is cleansed with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It was necessary then that the copies of the heavenly ones should be cleansed with these, but the heavenly ones themselves with better slaughter offerings than these. For Messiah has not entered into a set-apart place made by hand, figures of the true, but into the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of Elohim on our behalf. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters into the set-apart place year by year with blood not his own, for if so, he would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the offering of himself. And as it awaits men to die once, and after this the judgment, so also the Messiah, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time apart from sin to those waiting for him unto deliverance. Chapter 10 For the Torah, having a shadow of the good matters to come, and not the image itself of the matters, was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offered continually year by year. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because those who served once cleansed would have had no more conscience of sins. But in those offerings is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, Coming into the world, he says, Slaughtering and meal offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In ascending offerings and offerings for sin you did not delight. Then I said, See, I come in the role of the book it has been written concerning me to do your desire, O Allahim saying above, slaughter and meal offering and ascending offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire nor delighted in, which are offered according to the Torah. Then he said, See, I come to do your desire, O Elohim. He takes away the first to establish the second. By that desire, we have been set apart through the offering of the body of Yahusha, Messiah, once for all. And indeed, every priest stands day by day doing service and repeatedly offering the same slaughter offerings, which are never able to take away sins, but he having offered one slaughter offering for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of Elohim, waiting from that time onward until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being set apart. And... The set-apart spirit also witnesses to us. For after having said before, This is the covenant that I shall make with them after those days, says Yahuwah, giving my laws into their heart, and in their minds I shall write them. And their sins and their lawlessnesses I shall remember no more. Now, where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer a slaughter offering for sin. So, brothers, 
having boldness to enter into the set-apart place by the blood of Yahusha, by a new and living way which he instituted for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart in completeness of belief, having our hearts sprinkled from a wicked conscience and our bodies washed with clean water. Let us hold fast the confession of our expectation without yielding, for he who promised is trustworthy. And let us be concerned for one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging, and so much more as you see the day coming near. For if we sin purposely after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a slaughter offering for sins, but some fearsome anticipation of judgment and a fierce fire which is about to consume the opponents. Anyone who has disregarded the Torah of Moshe dies without compassion on the witness of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think shall he deserve who has trampled the son of Elohim underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was set apart as common, and insulted the spirit of favor? For we know him who has said, Vengeance is mine, I shall repay, says Yahuwah. And again, Yahuwah shall judge his people. It is fearsome to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. But remember the former days, when after you were enlightened, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. On the one hand, you were exposed to reproaches and pressures, and on the other hand, you became sharers with those who were so treated. For you sympathized with me in my chains, and you accepted with joy the seizure of your possessions, knowing that you have a better and a lasting possession for yourselves in the heavens. Do not, then, lose your boldness, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the desire of Elohim, you receive the promise. For yet a little while, he who is coming shall come and shall not delay. But the righteous shall live by belief. But if anyone draws back, my being has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to destruction, but of belief to the preservation of life. Chapter 11 And belief is the substance of what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. For by this the elders obtained witness. By belief we understand that the ages were prepared by the word of Elohim, so that what is seen was not made of what is visible. By belief, Abel offered to Elohim a greater slaughter offering than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Elohim witnessing of his gifts, and through it, having died, he still speaks. By belief, Enoch was translated so as not to see death, and was not found because Elohim had translated him. For before his translation, he obtained witness that he pleased Elohim. But without belief, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim has to believe that he is, 
and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. By belief, Noah, having been warned of what was yet unseen, having feared, prepared an ark to save his house, through which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to belief. By belief, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he was about to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By belief, he sojourned in the land of promise as a stranger, dwelling in tents with Yishak and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking for the city, having foundations, whose builder and maker is Allahim. By belief also, Sarah herself was enabled to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the normal age, because she deemed him trustworthy, who had promised. And so from one, and him as good as dead, were born as numerous as the stars of the heaven, as countless as the sand which is by the seashore. In belief, all these died, not having received the promises, but seeing them from a distance, welcomed and embraced them, and confessed that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. For those who speak this way make it clear that they seek a fatherland. And yet, if they had indeed kept remembering that place, from which they had come out, they would have had the chance to return. But now they long for a better place, that is, a heavenly. Therefore, Allahim is not ashamed to be called their Allahim, for he has prepared a city for them. By belief, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Yitzchak, and he who had received the promises, offered up his only brought forth son, of whom it was said in Yishak, your seed shall be called, reckoning that Allahim was able to raise even from the dead, from which he received him back as a type. By belief, Yishak blessed Jacob and Esau concerning that which was to come. By belief, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Yosef and did reverence on the top of his staff. By belief, Yosef, when he was dying, made mention of the outgoing of the children of Israel, and gave orders concerning his bones. By belief, Moshe, having been born was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a comely child and were not afraid of the sovereign's command. By belief, Moshe, having become great, refused to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh, choosing rather to be afflicted with the people of Elohim than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a time deeming the reproach of Messiah greater riches than the treasures in Mitzrayim, for he was looking to the reward. By belief, he left Mitzrayim not fearing the wrath of the sovereign, for he was steadfast at seeing him who is invisible. By belief, he performed the Pesa and the sprinkling of blood lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By belief, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, and when the Mitzrites tried it, they were drowned. By belief, the walls of Yeraho fell, having been surrounded for seven days. By belief, Rahab, the whore, did not perish with those who did not believe, having received the spies with peace. 
And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to relate of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Yepheth, also of Daoud and Samuel and the prophets, who through belief overcame reigns, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became mighty in battle, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting release, to obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of mockings and floggings and more, of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were tried, they were sawn in two, they were slain with the sword, they went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being in need, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes of the earth, and having obtained witness through the belief, all these did not receive the promise. Allahim having provided what is better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Chapter 12 We too, then, having so great a cloud of witnesses all around us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking to the prince and perfecter of our belief, Yahusha, who for the joy that was set before him endured the stake, having despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Allahim. For consider him who endured such opposition from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and faint in your lives. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the appeal which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For whom Yahuwah loves, he disciplines, and flogs every son whom he receives. If you endure discipline, Allahim is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become sharers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Moreover, we indeed had fathers of our flesh disciplining us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed disciplined us for a few days, as seemed best to them. But he does it for our profit, so that we might share his apartness. And indeed, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but grievous. But afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So strengthen the hands which hang down and the weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest the lame be turned aside, but instead to be healed. Pursue peace with all, and pursue a partness without which no one shall see the master. See to it that no one falls short of the favor of Allahim, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, by which many become defiled, lest there be any one who whores 
or profane one like Esau, who for a single meal sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wished to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it with tears. For you have not drawn near to a mountain touched and scorched with fire, and to blackness, and darkness, and storm, and a sound of a trumpet, and a voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that no further word should be spoken to them, for they could not bear what was commanded. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot through with an arrow. And so fearsome was the sight that Moshe said, I exceedingly fear and tremble. But you have drawn near to Mount Zion and to the city of the living Elohim, to the heavenly Yerushalayim, to myriads of messengers, to the entire gathering and assembly of the firstborn, having been enrolled in heaven, and to Elohim, the judge of all, and to the spirit of righteous men made perfect, and to Yahusha, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, which speaks better than the blood of Abel. Take heed not to refuse the one speaking, for if those did not escape who refused the warning on earth, much less we who turn away from him from heaven, whose voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And this, yet once more, makes clear the removal of what is shaken as having been made, so that the unshaken matters might remain. Therefore, receiving an unshakable reign, let us hold the favor through which we serve Elohim pleasingly with reverence and awe, for indeed our Elohim is a consuming fire. Chapter 13 Let the brotherly love continue. Do not forget to receive strangers, for by so doing some have unwittingly entertained messengers. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them and those being mistreated, since you yourselves also are in the body. Let marriage be respected by all, and the bed be undefiled. The Elohim shall judge those who whore and adulterers. Let your way of life be without the love of silver, and be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I shall never leave you nor forsake you. So that we boldly say, Yahuwah is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do to me. Remember those leading you who spoke the word of Elohim to you. Consider the outcome of their behavior and imitate their belief. Yahusha Messiah is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be borne about by various and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established by favor, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have a slaughter place from which those serving the tent have no authority to eat. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the set-apart place by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. And so Yahusha 
also suffered outside the gate to set apart the people with his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For we have no lasting city here, but we have seek the one coming. But we seek the one coming. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a slaughter offering of praise to Elohim, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And do not forget to do good and to share. For with such slaughter offerings, Elohim is well pleased. Obey those leading you and be subject to them. For they watch for your lives as having to give account. Let them do so with joy and not groaning. For that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us, for we trust that we have a good conscience, desiring to behave well in every way. But I particularly encourage you to do this, that I might be restored to you the sooner. And the Elohim of peace, who brought up our master Yahusha from the dead, that, that that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his desire, working in you what is pleasing in his sight through Yahusha Messiah, to whom be esteemed forever and ever. Amen. And I call upon you, brothers, bear with the word of encouragement. I have written to you in few words. Know that brother Timotheus has been released, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Greet all those leading you and all the set-apart ones, those from Italy, greet you. Favor be with you all. Amen. The end of the book of Hebrews.